When a game releases to absolutely horrendous reviews, it could be a long, grueling process to pull themselves out of that hole. Oftentimes, due to funding or game devs simply losing their drive, these flop releases are swiftly forgotten and development abandoned. Yet there are a very small handful of games that we can confidently say climbed out of the ashes and rose to become a beloved piece of media. One such game is Cyberpunk 2077. To say this game was broken on release would be an understatement. Cyberpunk 2077 was barely playable. This game was demolished by critics and fans alike because on release, Cyberpunk 2077 was nothing more than bugs and broken promises. However, a handful of years after its release, Cyberpunk 2077 is heralded as a near masterpiece. So how does a game go from this Have a look around the area. I lost contact with the Delamain network vehicle nearby. Will do. To this. Cyberpunk, the tabletop role-playing game, was developed by Mike Pondsmith back in 1988. Inspired by the cyberpunk genre from which it gets its name, Pondsmith took great inspiration from prior cyberpunk works, such as Walter John Williams' novel Hardwired, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, and William Gibson's Neuromancer. The TTRPG saw middling success with multiple follow-up editions being released in 1990 and 2005. Around early 2012, Polish video game developer CD Projekt Red, the developers of the highly successful Witcher video game series, approached Pondsmith about adapting his world. Pondsmith and CDPR managed to reach an agreement granting CDPR the license to Cyberpunk's story from the year 2077 and onward, with Pondsmith retaining rights to any year prior. Pondsmith, who actually had developmental experience working on titles such as Crimson Skies, Bloodwake, and The Matrix Online, would remain very close with CDPR, acting as a consultant to ensure Cyberpunk's tone and story remained consistent with his material. In May 2012, the development of Cyberpunk 2077 was officially announced, with the game's first trailer being released in January of 2013, showcasing a scene where the police and MaxTac apprehend a cyberpsycho. With all the pieces in place, CDPR hunkered down and development of Cyberpunk 2077 truly began. Initially slated to be developed using CDPR's in-house game engine, Red Engine 3, after facing multiple technical setbacks, Red Engine 4 was developed, which greatly aided the developers in creating a first-person game. Red Engine 4 saw a near-total rework of the engine CDPR was used to working with, and development of said engine continued throughout Cyberpunk's development. Red Engine 4 allowed CDPR to create a much more realistic world with ray tracing, global illumination, diffuse illumination, and ambient occlusion. Other features of this new engine included higher texture resolutions, improved shadow maps, and character skin shading, amongst a whole plethora of other impressive sounding features. Despite all this sounding well and looking incredibly good, this created a serious issue for CD Projekt Red. Many, if not all of these impressive features, would be extremely system intensive. Cyberpunk 2077 was slated to be released on PC and consoles, and testing on prior gen consoles, like the PS4 and Xbox One, resulted in many issues. CD Projekt Red would partner with multiple companies to create additional tools to assist in the development and implementation of these impressive features. Yet the console ports continued to be a thorn in their side. Despite this setback, the Cyberpunk 2077 team continued to chug along developing this monumental game. In 2015, CD Projekt Red's The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was released to insanely high praise with over 200 Game of the Year awards. Even its follow-up DLCs were heralded as being some of the best post-launch content, with Hearts of Stone and especially Blood and Wine being unanimously loved. With about 20-ish percent of the Witcher 3 team moving over to work on Cyberpunk 2077, fan expectations began to rise. If CDPR could make a game like The Witcher 3, how could they do anything wrong? Hype began to grow, and by this time, the only trailer was pre-rendered and released two years prior. Next to nothing was known about this game, but it didn't stop the hype from gaining steam. The content drought ended during E3 2018, and we received our first new trailer in years. 
Despite being still pre-rendered, we began to gain a more clear picture of what to expect from this upcoming game. After the presentation, journalists were invited to watch a 48-minute behind-closed-door gameplay walkthrough. However, it wasn't long after that the general populace was able to see this footage. And it looked good. Really, really good. We saw the early stages of character creation, the first mission, and a little bit of the overarching story. And people loved it. Content about Cyberpunk 2077 began to occasionally trickle out, but things were still pretty hazy. However, in E3 2019, everything changed. While the hype was still growing, it was still fairly moderate. During the Xbox showcase, the stage began to glitch, and we were met with a gorgeous trailer. Like all prior trailers, it was still pre-rendered. However, this one was different. We actually got a glimpse at what the story could be. We were introduced to our protagonist, V, and his friend Jackie coming back from a botched gig. Dexter Deshaun meets with V, only to double-cross him, seemingly killing him. But the trailer doesn't end there. V then wakes in a landfill with none other than Keanu Reeves playing Johnny Silverhand, an extremely important character to cyberpunk lore. But it doesn't end there. Keanu Reeves then came out on stage to talk about the game, blessing us with this amazingly memeable moment. Walking the streets of the future is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Reeves then concluded his presentation with another glimpse of Cyberpunk's gameplay, and a release date of April 16th, 2020. The hype train had officially left the station. And this is where the issues begin. Cyberpunk 2077's initial April release date would be delayed to September 17th, then subsequently to November 19th, and finally December 10th, 2020, despite going gold in September. Which in case you don't know what that means, going gold means it's finished and it's ready for release. Due to all the delays, the quote-unquote fans were not happy. A handful of especially sad human beings began sending death threats to the devs, with senior game designer Andrzej Zawitski addressing the threats on Twitter, stating, I want to address one thing in regards of the cyberpunk game delay. I understand you're feeling angry, disappointed, and want to voice your opinions about it. However, sending death threats to the game developers is absolutely unacceptable and is just wrong. We are people just like you. The final delay was a rather strange development for the Cyberpunk team, as they themselves didn't even know of the delay until the day it was announced. This was because of a strange Polish labor law which states that leadership could not legally tell the whole team without having each member sign a non-disclosure agreement. If they did, without the use of an NDA, it would be considered leaked insider information which could impact stock equity. It was reported that nearly 90% of the team were not informed of this new development. Due to COVID-19 canceling E3 2020, CDPR held an online showcase called Night City Wire, where they revealed new gameplay trailers and behind-the-scenes footage of the development. During this presentation, it was announced that next-gen ports of the Xbox Series X and PS5 were delayed, with the promise that anyone who held a last-gen copy were able to freely download the game on the respective next console generation. But the delays kept coming as the Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer was announced to be delayed until 2021. Despite all these delays, fans were still chomping at the bit to get their hands on this game. And on December 10th, after nearly nine years of development, Cyberpunk 2077 was released. Where to begin? When Cyberpunk 2077's release window came in, it was a big deal. This game that had been in development for so long, created by beloved developers, was finally going to be released. And when the day came, disaster struck. Despite sites like Metacritic rating Cyberpunk 2077 as generally favorable, its launch was considered to be absolutely disastrous. Cyberpunk 2077 suffered from a plethora of bugs and performance-related issues, especially on last-gen hardware, resulting in some players being unable to even play the game. The story of Cyberpunk's failure was picked up by multiple news outlets, with the New York Times even stating, Cyberpunk's rollout is one of the most visible disasters in the history of video games. The backlash from all of the bugs and performance issues resulted in Sony pulling Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store. CDPR would issue full refunds for disappointed players out of their own pockets if necessary. Many considered this to be CD Projekt Red's fall from grace, and a lesson to all in overhyping a game. Behind the scenes, however, 
many were anticipating this. As the launch day approached, CDPR's developers were becoming increasingly more concerned with some of the promises being made by CDPR's management. Around 2019, there were rumors spreading that CDPR was incredibly behind schedule, as top executives and key board members began to leave. According to multiple former and current employees, there was chaos behind the scenes, misleading deadlines, infighting, incompetence, and poor planning leading to unnecessary crunch, with one former employee stating, the owners treat the company as a machine to earn money and do not see employees as people, but more like data in the table. Even after all the delays, CDPR managed to make a functional game for PC users. It was the console ports that was the issue, current and last gen notwithstanding. When the time came for review copies to be sent to game journalists, only the PC port of the game was released. Multiple journalists attempt to obtain a console port of the game, but CDPR kept withholding the title, stating that they would, quote, hold off sending our console codes until closer to launch, so they could send them securely. They never sent anything. Basically, all the hype generated by positive reviews prior to release was simply due to game journalists playing the only functional port of the game. After the ensuing chaos of this horrendous launch was over, CD Projekt Red's stock dropped 41% and the infighting only grew, with CDPR's developers pointing fingers at executives' unrealistic deadlines and false promises. The situation of Cyberpunk 2077's horrendous launch even resulted in a class action lawsuit being filed by CDPR's investors due to potential criminal misrepresentation in order to receive financial benefit. The lawsuit was settled in early 2023 for $1.85 million. It would be later reported by Jason Schreier in 2021 that a main reason for Cyberpunk 2077's rather lacking performance was due to higher-ups not understanding the effort that would be needed to develop this highly ambitious game. Despite having twice as many developers working on Cyberpunk compared to The Witcher 3, CDPR assumed it would take roughly the same amount of time to develop this game as it would any of their other games. Because of this, a bulk of development for Cyberpunk 2077 began in 2016. However, the rather ambitious goals of Cyberpunk, coupled with the new Red Engine 4, led to many developmental difficulties. On top of the technical issues, a rather major issue was the simple lack of organization between the many developers working on this project. Due to this chaotic development, many developers pleaded with management to delay the game's release. Co-CEO of CD Projekt Red, Marcin Owinski, issued an open message to players in 2021, apologizing for the state of the game and asking fans to blame him and the board, not the developers, for releasing a game in such a poor state. Owinski would state that the company underestimated the task of making a game optimized for PC run smoothly on seven-year-old consoles. While working on issuing out refunds and reinstating the game on the PlayStation Store, Awinski outlined a year-long plan that would involve multiple patches in order to bring the older console versions to better performance standards. They would then look to optimize the game for newer consoles, prior to any further additional content development. Due to focusing entirely on stabilizing the game and re-establishing their good name, CDPR made the decision to cancel Cyberpunk 2077's multiplayer, with senior quest designer and coordinator Philip Weber stating the team's main priority was the main experience, and that the multiplayer just had to go away. After this horrendous launch, mass fan backlash, and just copious amounts of shit hitting multiple fans, CD Projekt Red hunkered down once more and got to work attempting to rebuild their crumbling good name. In September of 2022, something unforeseen happened. Cyberpunk 2077 got a second chance. Yet the second chance didn't come in the form of DLC or new updates. It came from an anime. A limited series set in the world of cyberpunk titled Cyberpunk Edgerunners was developed by Studio Trigger and released on Netflix to incredible reviews. This show was praised for its characters, story, and world building, and in its first week of release, Cyberpunk Edgerunners debuted on Netflix's top 10 charts with over 14 million hours viewed. But it didn't stop there. Despite all of the issues and fan backlash of Cyberpunk 2077, the release and subsequent mass success of Edge Runners led to the game getting an increase in the number of units sold and an uptake in returning players. Many fans who decided to give the game a second chance saw all the work CDPR had been doing to fix their game. Not only this, but released concurrently with Edge Runners was a massive new update to the game, which improved the game even more. Due to the incredible success of Edge Runners, CDPR would have the best third quarter sales in their entire history. With this newfound appreciation for Cyberpunk, the team was more dedicated than ever. 
Despite all of the backlash, they were driven to make the game what it was always meant to be. Update after update came and the player count only grew. CDPR owned up to their mistakes and actually rectified them by creating a stable game on consoles as well as adding small amounts of additional content. Piece by piece, the team worked hard to restore their original vision for Cyberpunk 2077. Around the same time of Edge Runner's release, CD Projekt Red confirmed that an expansion titled Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty would be released in 2023. A trailer for Phantom Liberty was released during the 2022 Game Awards, which revealed that Idris Elba had joined the project, as well as confirming Reeves' return. During the 2023 Game Fest, CDPR announced that, alongside Phantom Liberty, there would be new additions to the base game in a free 2.0 update that saw the inclusion of vehicle combat, an overhauled progression system, and a change to how cyberware functioned. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty released on September 26, 2023 to mass praise. Currently on Metacritic, Phantom Liberty sits at a higher score than the base game, with some claiming this to be the best expansion created by CD Projekt Red. At the time of writing this, the player count has once again skyrocketed and only seems to be growing with every passing day. CD Projekt Red has seemingly done the unthinkable. They revived a dead game. While, yes, Edge Runners did bring fans back, it was the incredible effort on the developer's behalf to fix their past mistakes that kept fans playing this incredible game. This isn't some by-the-numbers game made by a boardroom full of suits trying to appease statistics. It was a passion project made by incredibly talented developers, and the ever-growing popularity of this game clearly shows that. The ability to resurrect a game such as this takes time, effort, and incredible talent. And because of all of these factors, it's pretty clear that Cyberpunk 2077 could never fail.